thanks to my awesome viewers, what originally was planned as a three-part video series is actually turning into a four-part. Now, um, I put up last week a video series uh, based on beginner's tips and trips with the uh, introduction or uh, uh, a beginner into the EV world. Um, some tips and tricks that would help them get them along the way uh, that they would other figure out, otherwise figure out more of a long way or the hard way. Uh, so I got some really great suggestions uh, from from the last videos, things that I might have missed or skipped on those tips. So um, one thing I completely didn't think about, which is kind of stupid because this is Wisconsin, is winter driving. Um, now, not this won't cover for everybody watching, uh, but a lot of people drive in inclement weather that deals on the slippery, slushy, and extremely wet. So, I mean, most of this is general common sense that uh, you should already be practicing uh, if you have been already driving in any other vehicle on, in the wintry roads, but be mindful of local laws. Uh, meaning, um, now this isn't a rule in Wisconsin, but some states like uh, Colorado, for instance, have chain-up laws. Uh, when there is a notification um, in of a snowy weather or icy weather, um, they actually require you to put ch snow chains or, on your tires. Uh, now, if you have a Tesla, Tesla does have their own set of snow chains slash cables uh, that they sell with a really nice storage container. Um, that you can keep right in your trunk or frunk. Um, so be mindful of whatever laws that you might have where you live. Tire pressure. Uh, just remember, colder weather, your tire pressure will drop. Now, if you do nitrogen fill, uh, your pressure won't drop as much as it would if you just do regular air. Um, now, lately, my tire shop where I get my tires done I switched over to nitrogen fill and they also give uh, free top offs when needed um, so uh, that was a nice add-on normally I don't recommend paying extra for nitrogen fill but um, if you can get it for free awesome if not uh, just you know check your tire pressure and uh, top up or or even let some out as needed uh, now summer winter and all season tires uh, summer tires are great for the summer definitely do not under any circumstances run them in the winter time uh, the material that they're made out of even if you have a dry clean road in the winter time the material that the summer tires are made out of is designed to perform best in the warmer temperatures likewise winter tires will probably give you and uh, I was nowhere near I have uh, collision detection set too early, and that guy was making a right-hand turn. Um, now, winter tires, on the other hand, are designed to be softer in the colder weather. So if you run those during the summer, they are going to last a very, very short time. On top of that, uh, the winter tires are designed for the absolute best possible traction in wet, slick, icy, or snowy road conditions. And then you have your good old all-season tires. Now, all-season tires, uh, I personally run all-season tires on my Tesla. Uh, why? Um, because in Wisconsin, we have such a swing of weather. It's it's Now, while you could just put uh, your winter tires on and leave them on a longer period of time, but our, our weather just swings so bad. I mean, literally, I had the kids at the pumpkin farm in October on a Saturday. It was 85 degrees out. The next day on a Sunday, it was in the 30s and we had snow. Welcome to Wisconsin. All seasons are great general purpose. Uh, just be a little more careful in the wintertime. Now, the only reason I'd run all seasons in, on the Tesla in the wintertime, too, is because the traction system on these cars is second to none and I have never gotten stuck with my all seasons in the winter here in Wisconsin but um, if you have any kind of bad weather maybe even think just consider having a second set of rims with your all uh, with winners winners on them 
Ah, resist the urge for fast acceleration. Just take your time. I know it's very tough to do on a Tesla or even any electric car just because the acceleration is just so amazing. But resist the urge to floor it on wet or slick or snowy or icy roads. Accelerate slowly and try and plan your stops and so you can decelerate slowly. That way you don't lose traction and end up in a skid or a slide. And uh, avoid those hard brakes as much as possible. Um, now, I found, I discovered if you have a dual motor Tesla, um, this might help you a little bit. Now, in general, I recommend range mode off, or excuse me, range mode on. Gives you better range, and in general, the the uh, activation and deactivation of the rear drive unit as needed is imperceivable to a human in most cases. Now, the only downside to this, if you're cruising along on a snowy or a, a slicker road and that rear drive unit's no longer being used, you're basically front wheel drive, you have the potential to lose a little more traction. So having, having range mode off in those cases will keep the rear drive unit always turning under its own power, not, not just going into sleep mode, and can help with your traction just a little bit. There's also the feature, if you go to your controls menu and the driving tab, if you have a dual motor car, you will have what's called slip start. And you use slip start by turning that on. What it'll do is it will turn down the traction control a bit and allow your wheels to still turn even if you're not getting any traction, uh, which will help you get out of um, uh, snow, sand, mud, um, help you move, creep along on an icy, icy surface to try and get to a non-icy surface. If you're on a single motor car, you will have traction control on or traction control off. Now, contrary to popular belief, by turning the traction control off on a single motor car doesn't actually turn it off. It just turns it down. Um, not too considerably either. Uh, the reason behind this is without traction control of any kind, the torque on an electric car is so insane that it is extremely difficult to operate. If you want to completely turn off traction control in every way, shape, or form, you're going to have to pull the ABS fuse um, from the fuse box underneath your hood. You will also lose, um, I think, your center screen and a few other features of the car as well. So unless you're prepared to do that, don't just take it easy. Uh, of course, preheat the cabin, or pre, or in the summertime, pre-cool the cabin. But it's best to do this if you're plugged in. Why? Number one, it will draw shore power. And uh, actually, that's pretty much the main reason is it'll draw your shore power instead of taking the power from your battery pack thus leaving you with a little less range. Although, it sure is heck nice to preheat your cabin in the wintertime and get it nice and toasty warm. And, I mean, you don't need to preheat the cabin for 30 minutes. It only takes uh, uh, maybe even, not even five minutes to get it warmer in the cabin. Unless you're someone, like, visiting Wisconsin from Florida and, you know, you think 70 degrees is cold. Uh, in that case, uh, preheat away. Don't forget your winter washer fluid. Uh, most washer fluids are summertime fluids. They will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Get yourself some winter winter washer, washer fluid so it does not freeze and then crack your winter washer reservoir. Whew, don't try to clean your windshield with your windshield wipers if it's covered in ice. This will rip the living crap out of your windshield wipers and will require you to get some new ones. That's why on my cars, they generally last four or five years and still work excellent for me. Now, because we can preheat and pre-cool our cars, if you preheat your car a little bit, generally it will thaw out and allow the ice and snow to be free from the windshield. So in that case, the windshield wiper will just push it right off the side instead of go grinding at it. 
Likewise, I highly recommend against ice scrapers on your windshield. They do a great job at removing the ice and scratching your windshield in a lot of cases. And if you hit it just a little too hard, you might end up with a cracked windshield. You're better off preheating your car and defrosting the windshield a little bit. It only takes a few minutes and it happens so quick in an electric car, no problem whatsoever. Additional charging tips. Always plug in whenever possible, even if a 120 volt outlet is all that is available. So if you have a, available even a 120 volt outlet, see when the car is plugged in, the car is able to do its maintenance. Likewise, in the winter time, being plugged into a 120 volt outlet, even if it's really cold, it might not allow you to gain any charge. You might lose a slight bit charge, but it will allow the car systems to maintain themselves and keep the battery pack in its happy place temperature wise and keep it from getting damaged. Heat or cool on shore power, I've already mentioned this. Uh, Tesla states, uh, uh, Tesla states uh, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius uh, for longer than 24 hours without being plugged in will void your battery warranty. And that's because at that point your battery pack will be drained and damage will occur. Uh, because there will be no power left for the car to maintain uh, the safe, non-damaging temperature to your battery pack. But how often do we get those temperatures for longer than 24 hours? Uh, but as long as you are plugged in on anything, even a 120 volt outlet, the car can maintain all its systems pre in storage pretty much indefinitely. Uh, and if you are storing your car, uh, set your charge slider to 50% as that's the ideal storage percentage. And, uh, and just plug her in and leave her, leave her parked. Um, I was also asked about uh, wheel covers and rim types. Um, now the Model 3 has um, aero covers for the rims which increase efficiency. Uh, the Tesla Model S has what's called the aero rims. Not too many were made. Most consider them to be pretty ugly looking. Um, personally, I could care less what they look like because I'm in it for the range. And I've noticed anywhere from 10 to 30 miles additional range. So if you can still get your hands on the old style aero rims from Tesla for the Model S, awesome. Um, now for rim types, uh, usually the smaller the better. So 19 inch compared to 21 inch is going to be more efficient. Um, I'm not as familiar with the Model 3, but I think it's 18 compared to a 19 inch. Um, you do, you're going to want to go with the 18 inch plus the smaller rim sizes uh, will generally last longer in a potholy situation if you hit something. Uh, some things that I have seen done to increase range uh, was to put pizza pans on the rims and surprisingly that gave the best range out of everything. Uh, cut down on that side drag and he got about 50 miles more per charge. Uh, if you have big bucks to spend you could even get some ultra lightweight carbon fiber rims and uh, also if you have a little money to spend you can get Tesla's limited series arachnid rims available only through the uh, Tesla referral program and a lot of Tesla referral people that have won the rims um, are also selling them rims. I, I for one am. I got another set on the way. They're for sale. If you're interested let me know. Uh, for the Model X there's really no ultra efficient rim available. Uh, all that's really available are either the 20 inch or the 22 inch rims. And th thank you for those that corrected me from the last videos. Um, I was saying 23 inch, it's not 23 inch, it's 22 or a 20. You're gonna wanna go with a 20 for the best range. Also, if you're gonna be towing, you can tow more if you get the 20 inch rims. Uh, extension cords, uh, while not recommended by Tesla, um, I have caught Tesla showrooms actually using extension cords on occasion. Um, sometimes they just are necessary. So if you're going to use an extension cord, uh, use the proper size. 
Um, so here's just a, 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 a just a, a general general recommendation list. And if you can, always use a size at least one larger than what is needed. Uh, remember, most things do not use the power continuously. Now, electric car charging is using the power continuously, which is technically why we're li limited to 80% of a circuit instead of being able to hit its maximum. So, um, this is uh, based on the American Wire Gauge, also known as AWG. Now, if you're, um, now th and also on a, a general, if, at least in North America, if you're using an extension cord, you're going to be on a 120 volt outlet of some sort. So this is based on a 15 amp 120 volt circuit. Uh, you're going to want for 25 foot or shorter 14 AWG or gauge, we'll just say gauge, 14 gauge or larger. Uh, if you're going to be on a 50 foot or shorter cord, um, then you want 12 gauge or larger. And a 100 foot cord or shorter, you're going to want a 10 gauge or shorter. Um, 10 gauge on 240 volt could also be used for 30 amp uh, circuit or 24 uh, uh, amp charging speed at 240 volt if it is about 15 feet or shorter. So, like I said, uh, always try to size it larger than what you actually need because the one thing you don't want is you don't want that cord heating up too much. Uh, number one, that's lost power that could have been going to your car. And number two, it's a fire hazard. And like, like I said, that is based on uh, charging off of a 15 amp 240 volt outlet. And last for this part four segment are charge port colors. Now the charge ports on our cars, if, if you're driving a Tesla, have a couple different colors and series of flashes. Uh, of course, the most popular and the one that you want to see is green. When you plug your charge cable in and you see that green charge port, that means everything's A-OK -okay and you're able to charge. In that case also, as the power is flowing into the car, the charge part port I won't really say flash, but a more of a, a pulse. <whistles> the faster it's pulsating means the more current is coming to the car, more power the car is drawing. The slower pulses, that means you're nearing your charge and a charge and um, you're not or you're not drawing as much power. Then you have blue. Blue is what will come on uh, when nothing's happening and the charge ports open. Um, that just basically means I'm ready. Um, then you have red. Red, red's usually bad. We don't usually like red on a charge port. That means cable fault or ground fault. Uh, there's some sort of fault that is not allowing the car to charge. Um, and then you have yellow. Yellow is a hit or miss. Uh, in general, yellow mean um, if you see yellow after plugging in, the car will still charge, but it will charge at a limited rate. Um, that usually means there's a f there was something happened um, during that plug-in period or there's something wrong with the UMC or your supercharger or whatever station or plug or adapter you're plugged into. However, the most common cause of a yellow charge port is people taking their sweet time to plug in. When you plug in your charging cable into the car, you want to do it nice and swiftly. It doesn't have to be fast, just whoosh, done. If you go and get it in there. Um, it doesn't make as good of a contact uh, when the car is first looking for that and it thinks there might be, uh, the cable might either not be in all the way or might have been poor contact or dirty. So you want to do it a nice swift in. Now on a 1450 circuit, uh, so a 50 amp circuit, you can charge up to 40 amps. Um, you'll generally be limited to about 15 amp charge rate if you have a yellow charge port. Um, likewise, on the supercharger, I'm not sure, it varies a little bit on what the output you'll get from that, but if that charge port is yellow, just, it's simple, 99% of the time, just unplug it, hit the button again, wait for the charge port to unlock again, and then go nice and swift, not fast, just swift and in. And, um, and you should be good to go in most cases. 
Um, now I found it mostly happens at superchargers, um, but um, when when this happens at superchargers and it might take four or five times, that's usually because the pins on the supercharger may be dirty from the excessive use all the different cars that are charging there are going through. And last but not least, the infamous rainbow colored charge port. Yeah, um, if you see the rainbow charge port, make a visit to uh, Tesla service. Uh, that means just some of the multicolored LEDs are burned out. So not everything's firing, so you don't get your, your blue charge port anymore. Um, you might even end up with a purple or a, or a puke or some sort of uh, tie-dye. That just means you got some burned out or, or defective LEDs in your charge port. That covers it for part four. If you have any recommendations or suggestions for a part five and have any more questions, uh, beginner questions you'd like answered, please post in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and please subscribe if you have not already. If you find my content helpful, please consider uh, making a contribution through my Patreon. Link is in the description box below. Or if you're interested in purchasing a Tesla Model S or X, please consider using my referral code, which is also in the description box below. Signing off. Shazam!